hi guys welcome back to my channel uh today i know i'm looking a little bit <sighs> yeah I... I think i feel like at this point i'll just start off my videos asking you guys to tell me how i look so tell me guys how i look i just undid my hair i had some cornrows on and you know try to curl my ends and my front just so that i can do this anyways you know what this video is not about how i look this video is about how to become an influencer i get a lot of questions on instagram of how to become an instant how to become a content creator how to get paid doing a uh, content creation and this video is not the normal uh, you know tips how to become an influencer tips on instagram <laughs> you know like the ones that people keep posting on youtube this is not that kind of video this video is for that person who has been in the content creation space creating content back to back to back and not seeing any results you've been hitting at it for five years for three years for two years for 10 years but yet the same same people are getting brand deals the same same people that you're used to seeing on the screen they're the ones making it and you you feel like giving up this video is for you we want to start off 2024 getting our bag you know <laughs> getting our bag and this is actually going to be based on my experience i've been on the influencer industry or the content let me not say influencer industry but i've been in the content creation space for like five years but let me tell you my story so so that you can better understand where i'm coming from and how i got where i am and how i'm still getting to where i want to be and before we get started my name is evie so subscribe to my channel to join the diamonte family if you're new here and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back all the time you know <laughs> yeah so now that we got that out of the way um so i started content creation when i immediately I finished high school that was when i was 19 years in 2019 and i was just creating content because i loved talking to myself and talking to the camera <laughs> at this point you won't see the videos from back then because they were so cringe they were so childish and I, I created content, you know, I had fun with the camera, I, I documented my experiences, learning French at Allianz, you know, all that stuff. And I found it fun to document my life on YouTube and on Instagram. So then one day uh, things happened. I went into the ships, you know, I went into the pits, you know. Uh, so in 2020, was it 20, in 2021? Yeah, in 2021, that's when I started doing this as um you know with the hopes of making it into my job and making it into a career so it was around this time when instagram had changed its algorithm and they started taking down accounts that you know were looking fishy they were growing so fast they were getting a lot of i was getting a lot of views on my reels i was getting like 900k views i was getting like 500k views so i don't know what it was that time that period when accounts started you know being deactivated for no reason so yeah i was one of those people my instagram was deactivated and i remember i just got my first you know at that time i was getting like free stuff so i got free stuff and they were demanding that i post on my stories you know and my instagram went so i fell into depression like i was like kai i've been struggling i've been struggling to grow my instagram all this time and they just want to deactivate my account i did everything to get back that account i didn't get it i took a picture with you know to signify that i'm a real person but they never returned my account my instagram account but i was like you know what i think i need to go on a break so i went on a break <laughs> Off of social media i deleted tiktok i deleted youtube i deleted instagram i deleted every social media app and i almost deleted like that was around the time that i started deleting all my videos on youtube because my youtube videos were not getting that many views they were getting like 100 views 10 views or 50 views so <laughs> i wasn't really i was like you know what am i in the wrong space so yeah i deleted a lot of videos i deleted a lot of videos i actually wanted to delete the whole channel um by itself and i was like something was like told me why don't you just go on a break and then come back once you're fully ready to start you know a new life 
So that's what I did. I took a break and opened a new Instagram account in 2022, April. Yeah, April 2022. And that account did so well. I remember posting my first uh, reel, my first five reels. Like, I just took the content that was already on my TikTok account and posted it. Like, I was posting, like, every single day, a reel, a reel, a reel. And I remember waking up one day and I was like, damn, these reels are doing well. <laughs> these reels are doing well. So that was also around the time that reels was becoming so popular. So I was posting a lot of reels and it grew my account so fast. So yeah, and now we are at where we at, you know? Um, so for YouTube, I decided to come up, like a year later, I was like, you know what? I should totally rebrand myself and create a new brand name, create a new persona. Instead of becoming an influencer or a content creator, I should become a brand on my own where I can just put on this you know, new brand and make it into a business. So that mentality of switching up my whole entire persona on social media, I think it's made a huge difference because I said taking Instagram more seriously, I was posting so consistently. I was posting also on YouTube so consistently. Like it just made me look at content creation as a job because back then uh, when I didn't used to grow that fast, uh, I was just doing it for fun. So now when I created this whole persona, this whole brand, I was uh, more interested in creating content that both the brands and, you know, people will enjoy. Um, so yeah, that's my story. So it has taken me five years of going into the pits, rising up again. <laughs> going on a flat line on a plateau and not really feeling like i'm going anywhere so now we're going to go into the advice the tips that i have for you guys it's not necessarily tips it's just advice that took me to where i am now and that is taking me to where i want to go uh so my first advice is start taking content creation as a job uh there's so many times we shop for others and we don't shop for ourselves content creation is something that will benefit you a hundred percent and it won't like you won't be splitting the income with anyone else other than YouTube and taxes and you know the government. But what I'm saying is <laughs> content creation, once you start earning from content creation, that money is yours. Why would you show up for someone else, like someone else's business, the job, your nine to five? Why would you show up consistently for that person and not show up for yourself? So start taking content creation seriously. Only that way can you be consistent. Only that way can you produce quality content. Only that way can you show up for yourself and show up for your content creation journey or career with your full self. Like when I used to take content creation as a hobby, I didn't grow that fast. Uh, you know, social media, Instagram, YouTube forgot that I even existed because if you're not consistent, uh, the apps kind of forget that you exist. Unless you are very famous, then you're going to still be remembered by people. But Instagram, YouTube, social media platforms do forget people that don't post often. So you need to post consistently um, on your platforms. And the only way you can post consistently, the only way you can produce quality content, if you start taking, is if you start taking content creation as a job, take it as your nine to five, take it as something that you have to show up for every single day or every single week. If it was your nine to five, you'd be constantly talking to, you know, the consumers, telling them, you know, smiling at them, telling them hi, you know, you'd be constantly engaging with your workers at the workplace, but why would you not engage with your community? So always make it a habit to respond to comments on YouTube, respond to comments on Instagram, because it's going to help you build that community that will want to come back to watch your video because, you know, the essence of being on social media is to make online friends. So make friends with your community, engage with them, laugh with them, respond to their comments, like their comments. If responding is too much, then like their comments and you'll find that you will grow You'll grow a lot. So my other advice or my other tip for you guys is, and it's going to be very contradictory to what others tell you. And usually when I hear a content creator tell me this and I look at their quality and I'm like, but your videos are so, you know, they're so high quality. They're so high quality. Like, what are you using? 
they're using a very fancy camera and they're here telling you you don't need a fancy equipment to start content creation like okay granted you don't need a fancy equipment if you're using an iphone 15 an iphone 13 an iphone 14 because iphone is already built in with a very good camera especially if you use the back lens it's going to be very good like it's all you need actually for filming and creating content but i think if you can afford an iphone 14 an iphone 15 which is a thousand dollars then i think you can afford buying a camera that's only 500 dollars that is a canon g7x or a canon m50 and just you know using that actually canon g7x is the most affordable camera that actually is very amazing in content creation like <laughs> all i'm saying is invest in a good uh filming equipment because i for me for me as a viewer this is my experience when i'm looking at other people's videos if i click on a video and i'm struggling to look at the quality it has i'm not gonna watch it if i try to enhance the quality to 720p or 1080p hd and i'm not seeing anything like i'm just seeing grains i'm not gonna watch it if i'm struggling to hear you speaking as a content creator, as a viewer, I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not gonna spend time on something I cannot hear well or something that I cannot see clearly. Like um, there's another person out there with the same type of content that you have that has made it with a good camera. I can see them clearly, even better than my eyesight and has a better audio that I can listen to. I don't have to listen to what you, like I'm just saying it in this perspective of a viewer. Some people are just harsh and you know like that and i feel like sometimes when i hear people or hear content creators saying oh you don't need a fancy equipment just use your phone i feel like they're gatekeeping or they're trying to um, minimize the content creation space and make it not as saturated as it is but you do need a filming equipment uh, when you go to your nine to five job i'm sure you show up as your best self you're going to wear a suit you're going to make sure you've washed your you know body you smell good you're going to make sure that when you're going for that interview you're going to present all your papers then why don't you do the same for content creation if you want it to be your job a brand let me tell you when i'm working with brands they always ask me what camera are you using i don't know if it's just me but they always ask me uh what camera are you using or they look at my previous videos to see if they are high quality enough for them to actually invest money in me so that advice of you don't need a fancy camera equipment only works for someone who doesn't love content creation as much and they feel like they're going to give up at some point then please don't buy a camera equipment if not succeeding on social media is going to completely derail you don't buy a fancy camera because you don't need it otherwise you can buy a canon g7x which will also help you to just take memories take pictures out there when you're traveling and you just want to take pictures to keep uh, in your you know folders or whatever you can use it for the same thing otherwise investing in a good camera equipment is something that i would recommend to every content creator who has been in this game for five years even if you haven't seen any growth invest in a good camera equipment and i'm telling you even if you are at a thousand subscribers or 500 subscribers and you're getting and you have a solid based community a brand is going to see your content and they're going to work with you remember this is a job that you see yourself one day profiting from and brands will always will always demand will always demand high quality videos will always demand high quality audio because i as a brand i'm not going to invest in someone that i'm struggling to see their content or i'm struggling to see the color of whatever it is they're going to promote if i'm if I'm working with, uh, let's say I'm a fashion brand and I want you to promote my clothes, I'm not going to go for someone with a poor um, quality video because my the color of the cloth won't be seen as well. The quality of the clothes or how the cloth feels is not going to be visible to the person viewing the content. So it's only going to be visible for you. Hence, I'm not going to drive any sales from your content. So invest in good camera equipment or when you're going to take your pictures hire a photographer i'm sure they're not that expensive you can hire a photographer and take a bunch of pictures and just put them that you can post throughout the whole month and that's basically how i did it i always hired i have a 
I have a personal photographer. I actually have two personal photographers that take my pictures. So invest in good quality content so that brands can actually see that you are actually posting good quality content and they will be more inclined to work with you. Another thing I'm going to talk about is I'm assuming that the people watching this video are a bit established in content creation. They just don't know how to make money out of content creation or make it their job. So the next thing that I'm touching on is uh, paid brand deals and gifted collaborations or gifted PR. So I want you guys to go about the to go about the two in this manner. So let's say a brand offers to gift you something for free, expecting you to create a certain type of content for them. Some brands are actually going to push their luck and ask you to do for them an Instagram post, an Instagram reel and a mention on your YouTube channel and a mention on your TikTok, a dedicated TikTok video because they think our products are very expensive and they're very high quality. So if we gifted you these things, then you should make content for us. You should give us the free marketing that, you know, our products deserve. Whenever a brand comes to you like this, always uh, try to do not decline like, fully decline without giving any room for a potential collaboration i want you to uh, say okay for a gifted uh, for a gifted pr i'm only going to mention you on a vlog that i'm going to do on my youtube channel then i'm going to mention your products i'm going to mention that you sent me these products and yeah that's all i can do for you or if it's a brand that you've always loved work you've always wanted to work with or you've always wanted to collaborate with them, ask them, like, okay, let's say, for example, it's a skincare company. Uh, which skincare company can I, uh, which skincare company can I say? Okay, La Mer. La Mer is a very expensive, luxurious skincare brand. Like, I don't know why their products are that expensive, but their products are very expensive. Let's say they give you an entire skincare you know, collection, they give you a cleanser, they give you a moisturizer, they give you a scrub, they give you a face wash, they give you, like, they give you just everything and they tell you to do for us content on all those platforms. If you took that and did for them a YouTube video, you did like a full skincare routine on your YouTube using La Mer products, maybe integrating some bit of other skincare products because for one, they didn't pay you. So you can actually integrate other products in the skincare routine so that it doesn't look like it's really sponsored so you can just say uh so la mer sent me these products nini, nini, blah 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 and maybe use uh you know which other <laughs> maybe use a curology cleanser and then use a la mer la mer what la mer toner then use a la mer moisturizer then use a curology you know like mixing in other brands or even you can do a post you can use those products and do an instagram reel a very curated Instagram reel, not necessarily for La Mer, but to show other brands that you actually worked with La Mer. And you can even tell them that, you know, may I include that it's a sponsored video on my post? Because if a brand sees that you've actually worked with a company like La Mer and you've posted their, you know, you've posted content using them, using their products on your Instagram reel, considering it's a very luxurious brand, then other brands will be like, oh, wow, she works with La Mer. This is how her content looks like. Her content is such high quality. You know, she does skincare on her channel. Like it's going to give you added advantage on, um, on having, uh, you know, that brand portfolio on your media kit. So yeah, you can use those products and do a curated Instagram reels. It's actually going to benefit your channel. But if it's something like, you didn't really need or you didn't necessarily want then just don't give them too much if you give them too much they're going to come back and they're going to use you and they're, you're not going to make money from it so always be cautious when taking in gifted collaborations and taking in paid collaborations also on paid collaborations always aim high because brands will always try to bring you down like let's say you can say i charge two thousand dollars for an instagram reel they're going to try to bring you down to 1500 or even to 1200 so <laughs> sometimes it's good to aim higher because like 10 out of 10 times they always try to go lower also don't put too high if you put it too high then they're going to be like this girl yo she just loves money and you know live so yeah and whenever a collaboration doesn't go through like let's say for example you were to collab with a certain brand 
and the collaboration doesn't go through for whatever reason maybe they don't ship to your country or maybe they just don't have the means to reach the product to you or for whatever reason that's not really your fault or their fault based on circumstances and they cannot uh collaborate with you always make the option open uh talk to them nicely tell them you're open to collaborating with them in the future even if it was a gifted collaboration but they don't know how like it's halted for some apparent reason then be courteous be polite and tell them that's unfortunate i will be open to collaborating with you in the future uh if you get the means to you know bring the product here don't close them off completely leave an opening for them to come back because you never know you might blow up next year or you might blow up in january and they'll be coming back running you know <laughs> they'll come back running once you get your foot at the door and once you become you know once you become that girl you know <laughs> yeah another piece of advice which i also struggle with a little bit is don't be embarrassed like don't be embarrassed about being a content creator don't be embarrassed about talking to yourself you know with your phone in front of you and you're just there talking to yourself and telling people that you actually make content from looking good on social media like don't be embarrassed don't be embarrassed like people have made money in uh, more embarrassing like there's a person who makes money from doing nothing in japan the people who are hired to just fill, fill up space in restaurants and hotels because you know the hotel isn't making money so there are a lot of more embarrassing ways to make money content creation shouldn't be embarrassing don't be embarrassed to vlog in public because people are earning money however they're earning money it shouldn't concern you how they think about you talking into your phone or talking to your camera like it shouldn't concern you it shouldn't bother you so i think i'm going to stop there because i've already highlighted the key points that other influencers don't talk about or other youtubers don't talk about when they are doing such kind of videos and i think i've already answered most of the questions that i got i basically did this video based on the questions that i got on my instagram so that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it if you want any more tips or advice for growing on social media there are a lot of people that post such kind of advice tips on youtube uh you can go watch theirs but i hope i helped in some way you know i hope i helped in some way so yeah that's it for today's video subscribe to my channel to join the diamante family like this video share to this video to your friend who also wants to become a content creator or who's already in the content creation space and they are feeling stuck then this video is going to be perfect for them. So yeah, that's it for this video. Bye.